Okay. All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to the San Jose State Early Signing Day press conference. San Jose State announcing 17 newcomers to the program today on this early signing day. You can get all the information on SJSUSpartans.com. There's bio information uh, and even player highlights on SJSUSpartans.com. You can navigate to the football page to see all the signees. But with that, we'll welcome in San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan. All right. Hello, everybody. Pretty exciting day here. Uh, so much fun to go through this process uh, with the recruits and their families, the inception of the transfer portal, what that means for college football, um, watching high school games and junior college games. I think our staff's done a great job of uh, identifying, you know, high quality young men who love football and are dead serious about their school uh, to add to our football family here. I really like uh, all the pieces of this class and how they potentially impact us, you know, immediately and then also down the road. And, um, you know, I think with uh, Anthony Jones and Coach Carter kind of in charge of our player personnel and our recruiting efforts and then what everybody did individually in terms of our official visits and you know, just making this just a great experience when the players come, when the recruits come here with their families to, to take a look and, and kind of try it on for a couple of days. Uh, it was it was fast and furious. It's been crazy hectic, but it's also been really good. And, you know, there was a, it was a much different feel than a year ago, right? A year ago, all these kids signed. Some of them we had never even met. And uh, so this time it was fun to get to know them, get to know their families, get to watch them practice or play. Uh, just It just felt like a much more thorough process. And I think we're going to be really excited about this group. I think they're really going to have a chance to really impact us in a positive way. And I can't wait for them to all get here whenever that is in the next, uh, you know, six weeks to, you know, eight months. So it's pretty exciting. All right. We're going to open up to questions here. Uh, Vitas, go ahead. Vitas, what's up, man? How are we doing? Good, good coach. Um, so um, I guess we're going to start with uh, the two new quarterbacks that join. Uh, one's got a lot of experience and other one's uh, two freshmen coming in. Uh, how much are they going to impact the competition this uh, spring and summer determining who's going to take over for uh, Nick Starkle? Well, it's always the quarterback with you, Vitas. That's just always where you start. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember our conversations during the season. Um, you know, I, th I think – Obviously, we're really, really excited about both these players. And I think the one thing that everybody should understand in college football or just competitive sports anywhere, it's always about competition. Competition defines everything. And I think the best way to get the absolute most out of your players, your team, is to find ways to increase the level of competition in the practice environment, increase competition uh, you know, in, in your, you know, your workout and your off-season structure. And, you know, these guys that are going to be coming into this picture are going to definitely do that. And that's exciting for us. I think, um, you know, Shevin Cordero, obviously a very, very good player in our conference, um, had a great weekend with his family on their official visit. And it was just a really awesome thing for him to want to be a part of this. And I think he's going to be really, really fun to watch. I think he's a very exciting player, his ability to make every throw. Um, we've seen him do that. We've seen him do it against us. Um, and, you know, I think about two years or his retro freshman year, we go over there and the final score is 42 to 40. And, you know, I don't know how much he threw for, but it was too much. And we lost in a crazy close game where neither team punted. I mean, him and Josh Love were just dealing and it was so fun to watch. And I've been a fan of that young guy ever since. And uh, I'm just excited for him to jump into the fold here. And then Tyler Voss is a guy that we identified early. Uh, he had a lot of interest from a lot of people um, from the, you know, the camp circuit and touring around. And he came out here for a camp last summer and we just couldn't believe how well he threw it. And that was so like, we were so excited when he chose us. He comes from a great family, um, you know, just incredible people. His mom and dad, his brother uh, got to spend some time with them. You know, they came on a visit in season and then they got to spend some time with them last week when I went over to their house and he's a very intelligent, high quality guy. He throws it, he spins it as clean as any guy I've seen. And, um, and, and then, but he also has the ability to move. Like he can really, uh, really make moves, you know, get out of harm's way, throw the ball on the run. And uh, coach McGiven and I went and watched them play um, early in the season. I think our first buy. We went and watched him play, and I was just really impressed with him. 
uh, as a player. So we're excited about both those guys. It's going to be a lot of fun to get in the mix and, and our current quarterbacks are ready to compete. So like I said, everything's about competition and we're ready to go there. Jackson Moore, over to you. You've got a quarterback in Chevin and a receiver in Cooks that seems like on paper it could be one of the top passer, passer to receiver combos in the conference. Is How does this change what signing day is when you can bring in two players of that magnitude on a day like this compared to years past? Well, I think it's really challenging. Um, you know, I think it's really, really complicated. I know that I spoke with you guys, uh, you know, towards the end of the year about kind of the scholarship allotment, the NCA and what that does to your numbers and the inception of the transfer portal and, and what that means. And so it's made it made for a really challenging roster management situation where everybody's trying to uh, figure out how all the pieces fit. And, you know, when, you know, adding the guys, I think we added six uh, transfer portal players that we're really excited about. And we think all of them have a chance to positively impact our team. And when you combine a couple pieces with the pieces that are already here, I think we're going to play some really, really good football and people are going to love coming out to watch them play, watch us play. Yeah. Vicky Kino, go, to, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Brent, I have Steve Kerr from the Warriors had his quote a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago about you don't have a culture. You have a culture when you're in downtimes and basically from the early on, I remember that's something that you established with the program and, and, do you see that sort of paying dividends and the type of players and the type of character players you're attracting now? Is that, would you say that that's a, a good big part of that foundation? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, our culture, our feel, the vibe of our program is a critical component to players choosing us and choosing to be a part of it. I think our players do an incredible job in the recruiting process. Um, and our, and our staff does too. And, in, in of explaining that. And really the biggest thing is making or helping the people that visit feel it. I think um, I, I tell recruits all the time, trust your gut, how you feel when, when you go to all these different campuses, how does it feel to be there? How does it feel to be amongst the coaching staff? How does it feel to be amongst the players? Um, if it feels good, it's probably right for you. And, you know, that, that culture, that foundation of just having quality young men who are dead serious about football, dead serious about school, um, you know, I think that, you know, that collectively comes together to create a vibe of where guys want to be here and they're excited about being here and they're excited about our path and our process to playing good football. And so when the players choose us, it's an incredible honor that they choose us to be a part of this program. But I know it's really because of the culture that's created by our players and our coaches. Okay, Vitas, back to you. Coach, uh, last uh, year you added uh, Charles Ross via the transfer portal. Now you got two more uh, Nevada wide receivers. How much is that uh, part of them wanting to continue their journey with Eric Scott, who recently also joined your staff? No, I, obviously that's a huge part of it. Um, I, I think personal connection, you know, people, you know, have a huge impact on the experience, uh, no matter where you are. And uh, over history, and especially with the way things, you know, like with the coaching staff change at Nevada and, and those things, you know, being unknown, obviously, uh, Coach E. Scott was someone that they were, that had recruited them, that had coached them, that had spent a lot of time in, in their path and their process of development. And so that was a, a conversation that was easy for them to have and, and easy for us to have because we'd played against those guys. Like, we know how good they are. And so it was kind of a win-win on both sides of it. Jackson, back to you. Coach, how did uh, going through the transfer portal last year and pairing that with this year's results impact what you did with the transfer portal this season? You know, I think the transfer portal is going to affect different teams different ways. Um, for, for us, it was, it was a situation where uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, what do we need? Who's leaving? Where do we feel like we need a boost? Um, you know, I think some teams are going to go 100% transfer portal. Um, you know, for me that, that, you know, I have a concern about how that's going to impact the recruiting of high schools and junior college players. When you consider, you know, we had, we signed 17 guys today, six of them are transfer portal guys, right? So, you know, you start looking at what those numbers are nationally and what that's going to be. If you're considering that every college program is going to take 25 to 30% of their class, be transfer portal players. Then you start realizing that 
25% or 30% of that recruiting class is not coming from high school or junior colleges. And so uh, it's really created an interesting time in college football and college athletics in general. And we're just trying to find the people that best fit what we need and best fit who they are, right? We want to make sure we bring the right people into our program, the guys that are going to impact not just our team on the field, but also off the field. Vic Aquino, go ahead. Yeah, uh, stemming on that a little bit further, Brent, um, the makeup of the teams, especially Mountain West teams, there's going to be a lot of, you know, different lineups next year. And do you, do you find it even more unpredictable, uh, still par for the course, or just a normal ebb and flow of attrition? Go back real quick. Sorry. Go ahead, Vic. Yeah, the last question about the transfer portal, I was just kind of extending on that a little bit. And uh, a lot of the makeup of teams next year are going to be very different again. And is that unpredictable, uh, unpredictability and, or is that kind of normal for you? Or is that just normal ebb and flow of attrition from year to year, you know, and what to well, expect? The, well, I, I think it's, it's definitely unpredictable and it's definitely different, but I also think that's the way we're going. Like, I don't, you know, we're not going to go backwards. So I think everybody's going to be, uh, have to adjust to the new players that are joining programs and, 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 you know, what that is when you have to either, you know, attack or defend against the people that are, that are moving around roster wise, you know, in a sense, I, I would compare it in some way to the NFL and free agency, right? Like you're just, you're naturally going to see some of that um, as, as time goes because of the opportunities that are there or, the fit or the feel or NIL, or, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that the that, that players make decisions like that. And so I, th I think every year as we go, you're going to see more and more of this shuffling of the deck. And, uh, it, you know, I think the biggest challenge is going to be how do you best continue to serve and love and care for the people in your program so that they feel like they're having a good experience and they want to stay a part of it. Okay. Vitas over to you. Just to clarify one thing, all the transfer portal people, they're eligible to play right away. Nobody's going to have to sit out a year. Yes. And yes. Uh, do you know of any players that you are losing to the transfer portal? I mean, it's, you know, with the, with the limit on scholarships back to, what, 81, uh, you know, were there some guys who decided to leave uh, the program? I think there's going to be some of that naturally. And, you know, you know, my hope is that the guys that make that choice are guys that have graduated and, and got their degree and then make that choice because they're looking for an opportunity to play that might not be available to them here. Um, you know, I think it's always, always a little bit tricky with that, um, with scholarship numbers and, and, and especially now, because when you think about the, the class of 23, 24, 25 in college, all those guys were given another year of eligibility, but there's no more you know, the NCAA took our scholarship limits back to 85. So that, that part of it creates a really complicated kind of give and take in your roster management. And that, that's the hard part for current players, current coaches, for everybody. Because if, if you don't continue to bring players into your younger classes, right? So your freshman, your, your second year, you know, that type of thing you're going to eventually have no players in two years or three. You're going to have very few. You're not going to be able to sign enough players because of the 25 signee cap. So, again, it, it is a very, very uh, complex and uh, challenging roster management thing to work through with your staff, with your current players, with the future players that you're recruiting. All right, Jackson Moore, back to you. Coach, you got two transfer offensive linemen. Could you share a bit about how those came to be to join your, your class here? Yeah, we're excited about both those guys. Obviously, uh, James, we recruited the first time through, and, um, you know, he went up to Washington State and and had a good experience and, you know, a couple years and, and just found, like, he wanted to come home. And that's awesome for us, right? Anytime a Bay Area kid that doesn't choose us the first time, you know, out of the blocks, if he comes back and chooses us the next time, that's that's great because we have history with the young man. We know him. We know his family. We know his background. It makes it really a good thing and an easier thing for us to say to identify and and be excited about bringing him back to the Bay or or bringing him back to San Jose State. So 
that part's really good for us. And then Bryce, we're excited about Bryce. Bryce has started 30 games, you know, in the MAC. We know that's a physical conference, good football. We've had to play those teams two years in a row. We know how good they are. And so I'm really excited for him to get here, especially losing someone up front like Kyle Hoppy, who played a million games and, and uh, you know, Trevor Robbins, who played, a, you know, not quite a million, but close, you know. So uh, losing some of those interior linemen, you know, bringing a guy in who has played that much football and has that much experience is really exciting for us. And again, it will raise the level of competition in the offensive line group. It'll raise level of competition in practice, in the weight room, in the classroom, in the meeting room. All those places where if you're trying to level up as a program, you have to throw gas on that fire and find ways to raise the level of competition day in and day out. Vic Aquino, go ahead. Uh, just curious. I know there's time limits on what the players can you know, practice and be on the field and whatnot. Is there any kind of limitation like that on, on the coaches? Uh, I, I see Kevin McGiven kind of being chomping at the bit with two <laughs> dual threat quarterbacks and whatnot. I mean, um, I guess I'm asking if you guys are like constantly like 24 seven thinking through what, you know, what next year is going to be. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and Kevin McGiven has been in his office for 10 days with the lights out and the film on. He's <laughs> so, the guy needs to like, you know, shave and get, and, and get his, um, get himself together. No, but he's been pouring over film. Um, a lot of that, you know, has been in preparation for, you know, kind of what we need to get going and what we need to prepare uh, there's naturally a little bit of downtime for us because our players are um, going, you know, finals are ending today, I believe, and and they're going home for break for uh, a few. They don't come back till the 23rd of January. So, um, you know, I promise you in that time, our whole staff is going to be working about, you, you know, how do we get better, right? Schematically, culturally, recruiting, like every phase of it, that, that's what you do in the off season. You know, if we're expecting our players to find ways to level up, we have to do the same as a coaching staff. And uh, Coach McGiven is pouring over film. He's got 10 million formations and plays drawn on his dry erase boards. And uh, it's good. After I'm done here, I'm going to get him out of the office and say, okay, this recruiting class is wrapped up. Let's move forward. Good deal. Good deal. Beat us back to you. Coach, uh, obviously it's very heavy with offensive players being 13 of them versus four defenders. But you know, you get three linebackers, two of them with the same name and same birthday, and uh, uh, JC transfer out of uh, College of Mateo, which is one of the top programs in the nation. Uh, can you talk about just uh, what you expect from uh, that group? Because it seemed you obviously you're trying to fortify that front seven. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that we learned in our time here is that you, you can't ever have enough defensive linemen. You just can't. And so – um, or guys that are tied to the core, right? So with, with, the, with adding those guys to the front, I think, you know, Noah Lavulu is an excellent player, um, defensive end from College of San Mateo. They had a great team this year. He's been a stand, standout player. He's an all-state player. Um, the kid is tough. Um, he has an incredible motor. He can get to the quarterback. He's stout against the run. When you, when you meet him, you're going to love this guy. His smile lights up the room. His energy, I mean, the guy is magic. Just, just wait. When y'all meet him, you're going to be like, oh, that's what Coach Brennan was talking about. Um, and then the two Justins, those are two young, really athletic players come from really, really good high school programs. Um, I can't wait to, to see us start working with them in, in the football sense, right? Um, you know, we had them in a, in a camp. There's no pads. There's no, there's no, no one blocking them. It's, it's kind of not the same as, as real football, but we think they both have – tremendous upside they can both run and tackle and play in space which I think you have to do more and more now these days in college football the way people are spreading you out and and that kind of thing so uh, both the Justins were excited to get up here up here down here Jackson go ahead hey, coach uh, three running backs in the class um, can you share a little bit about each of them and uh, the emphasis to have that number of them in the class yeah, so, um, you know, I think what you see in, in those three guys is, is you see three guys that can be physical with the football, which is really, really exciting. I, I, we saw the benefit of that with Tyler and Kyrie and, and, and kind of how that group developed over the last two years, that when you get in those close games, you have to be able to run the ball. You have to be physical. You have to be able to run downhill and, and get first downs. And, and so that part of it with those three guys, you know, Jacob Galloway, is a big, thick, 
powerful back. And so we're really excited about Jacob. Um, when you see, just watch his highlight tape. Watch him running over people. He played every play of every game. He played offense, defense, special teams. He's blocking punts for touchdowns to win games. I mean, he is a su super active player uh, that we're really excited about. Um, and then Camden, I, I would say the one thing that's maybe a little bit different about Camden is that he has real speed, right? Like sub 10, 8, 100 meter speed. I'm expecting him to go better than that this spring. And he's another guy, really special kid, total leader. Um, you know, watch his highlight tape. He can make people miss. You watch him play defense. He comes off the edge. He sacks the quarterback. You know, our defensive staff is like, hey, I'm, you know, but I'm holding him off. Like, no, 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 this guy's a tailback because uh, we want to hand him the ball and, and, you know, give him a chance to turn on that blazing speed and, and, and make some of those, you know, 10, 15 yard runs into 50, 60, 70 yard runs. And uh, he's a great student. You know, the guy is special. And so you're going to love him. And then Juju, Juju is a kid from uh, my alma mater, St. Francis High School. He is, you know, one of the best players in Northern California. He has got all kinds of great film to watch. He, you know, the thing we like about him is that they play in a little bit more of a pro style scheme, which matches a run game wise, so which matches up to us a little bit. So you're going to see him, you know, run inside zone. You're going to see him run outside zone. You're going to see him run power and, and those things, those downhill runs. And he's also a kid that just is very serious about being great at football, comes from a great family and he's got awesome energy, big smile, super engaging. And those are the those are the guys that we're looking to add to our, our program. You know, those guys that love football, that that are good people to be around. Again, like how do they add to our our football team on the field, and then how do I, they add to our family culture off it? Vitas, going back to you. Yeah, Coach. Um, uh, obviously, you talked about uh, uh, Juju too. Uh, you know, uh, adding him and. Uh, but you also had a two offensive linemen out of St. Francis. One thing they could do well uh, this season was uh, run the ball, including what they did to Sarah during the regular season. Uh, um, but uh, three guys from your alma mater, how uh, was it easy to convince them? Say, hey, I, I went to St. Francis. I'm here now. Uh, what is it like recruiting at your alma mater? I, I mean, I think it would have meant something if I was a good player, but I wasn't. So I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really have the desired impact I was hoping for. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, it doesn't really matter what, whether it's that, you know, St. Francis or anywhere that you can, anytime you can recruit kids from programs that are used to winning, used to doing things the right way, having a high level of success, um, having a high level of demand placed on them, those, those things tend to play out well for us on the college level. They know what the expectations are. They know how to lift weights. They know how to work hard. Um, they, they know, you know, what's going to be expected of them. And, you know, we have a great indication of that as some of those other players from those programs uh, that are, that are here with us now that are having really good careers and, and a lot of production and good experiences. So um, we're, we're excited about Denaris and, and Nofo. We think they're going to give us something really, really special up front. Jackson, go ahead. Coach, referring to the, the challenges of roster management, is there a feel for how many spots could be available from today, or is that uh, a work in progress? That's a work in progress, um, you know, but part of my goal coming out of this class was that I wanted to have um, some, some numbers available um, going into spring practice. You know, we got to play a little bit and find out where we're at and where we think we need a little bit of a help, a little bit of boost. And so, you know, we're hopeful to have a little bit of flexibility. Um, coming out of spring. I think there will also be another run in the transfer portal coming out of spring practice, right? A guy somewhere is going to be competing for the starting job and he doesn't get it. And he's going to say, Hey, I need to go find somewhere where I can start. And so uh, that's, a, that's our own anticipation, but we definitely wanted to have some numbers available that, you know, as we go through this off season, we can start to identify like, Hey, I think we need one more guy in this position group or that position group. And so that's, that's a big part of our mindset. Hey, Vitas, final question. I guess just uh, how much uh, did you uh, travel uh, and uh, what are the plans for the holidays? <laughs> uh, so we've been, you know, the moment they green lighted us, we've been on the road all over the place or, or back here bringing, uh, you know, recruits and their families in for official visits. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I thought Anthony Jones and, and Alonzo Carter and our coaching staff did a great job 
of just hustling and, and, you know, executing those visits like really, really well. And, you know, we have a great situation here when players come here, they love their experience here. We, you know, where the, the stuff we do with them, how we structure the day, um, the involvement of, you know, Tobrook Blaine and beyond football, uh, Christine Watson, our academic presentation, like the, all those pieces, you know, Aaron Potoshnik in our weight room, like all, all these pieces come together. Um, Brandon McDonald in our training room and, and Laura Alexander, like all these pieces come together to try and give them a picture of what it's like being here. And so all those people just, you know, work their tails off to, to do a great, great job with it. And it was really, really well done. Um, you know, and then naturally the coaches, we were gone, you know, every day that I was on the road or available, I was, there were some days where I did three home visits in one day. By the end of the day, I was pretty tired. But um, again, those home visits or those opportunities are great situations because you're out of school and you're meeting with the player and you're meeting his coach and you're meeting his English teacher or you're meeting the principal and, and you're getting all this feedback about the people that you're bringing to your program, which is important. That's a big decision for us. It's a big decision for them. We're making a huge investment in them. And so we want to make sure we have all the information we can to, to make, make sure that we're bringing quality young people into this thing. And uh, <laughs> um, we have a we have a cell phone malfunction in this in the room here um, and, but the you know the travel because you know, most of our recruiting is done in the state of California uh, the travel is not as extreme as is what I experienced when I was at Oregon State and I was in you know seven states in four days and it was just absolutely brutal so this is a little bit more manageable um, but it's still really, really a hectic time for all of our coaches and our staff here. And uh, over the holidays, I'm going to watch my kids play basketball. Uh, I haven't seen them play very much because of the season and, and being on the road uh, recruiting. So I've got a daughter playing varsity basketball, a son playing JV, and I can't wait to be a dad and sit in the stands and just cheer. Just cheer. Just be a good dude. Just cheer for my kids. So, And uh, my daughter's back from college, Vitas, so I'm excited that she's back home and we get the family back together for a little bit of time. Thank you all. Appreciate you all. See you soon. Merry Christmas. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, once again, all the information on the 17 signees today is available at SJSUSpartans.com bio and highlight tape uh, available there. Thanks so much for attending. and We'll catch you next time.